In this demo, I'm going to show some of the basic stock management features and show a little bit of how those stock management uh, re records will factor into the requisitions that a user would create. So I'll start by logging in here as a vaccine nurse. This is running on our demo site. Any of you could access this if you wanted to as well. After logging in, you'll see that I come to the OpenLMIRS dashboard, and I'll just highlight that the menu items that you see here are defined by the roles that I have. So as a vaccine nurse, I have access to stock management requisitions and orders. If I was a different type of user, I may not have access to stock management or I might be able to see reports or administrative screens. So to start, I'm gonna to go to the physical inventory screen. And after this loads, we'll see that it's automatically picked up my facility, which is Macau 2 in the Kuamba province. And I can see that I have access to this EPI program and it knows that I have not yet started a new physical inventory. So I'll click on the Start button, and this will load the page to show me exactly what stock the system thinks that I have in my facility. So I can see here that for each product, it has the number of stock on hand. In some cases, products don't have any lots, there's no expirations or anything like that. But if we see here for this BCG, we can see that it actually has some that have no lot, but then some others that have a lot and an expiration date. And in which case then the quantity that's shown here is actually the total quantity of all of these items. So the use for this page is as a user, I would be going through and looking at the stock in my inventory to see how much do I actually have. And then this page is designed to make it really quick and easy for me to enter in the actual stock that I have. So I could just be typing this in, 78, 45, We'll use this as an example to show what would happen if I didn't actually have as much as I thought I did. So when I did my count, I actually came back with 80 instead of 89. And we can see here that the unaccounted quantity is actually showing me that, hey, there's, there's nine that are missing. So in this case, I would actually want to go in and say, well, I think nine of them just got lost. I don't know what happened to them. So I'm going to add this in as a reason. And I can see that the reason is lost. I lost nine of them. And so it can show me that now there's a total of negative nine that I'm saying that there's a, there's a discrepancy here. So if I click this update button, I can see that it shows me that there were nine that were lost. And it also shows me that the unaccounted quantity is now zero. And this is what you want. You want to be able to account for everything. Either, either you have what the system thinks you have or you don't and you need to give a reason for why not. So as a user, I'm going to go through and enter in all of the stock for all of the the products that I have in my stock room. So now I filled out all of the stock for the products that I have in my inventory. If I wanted to, if I had, let's say I had a product that was not in the list, I could add that product here. In this case, I won't need to do that. So I'm just going to click the submit button and it's gonna make me type in my name so that it can record exactly who filled this out. This is not technically required as it does keep track of the user, but this is just another handy feature as well. So I'll click the confirm button and this will save to the database. And then after it's saved, it's gonna open and show me the stock on hand page to give me an indication of the current state of the, of the facility after having saved this new physical inventory. So here I am on the stock on hand. Once again, it's showing me for my facility, Macau 2 in the Kuamba province for the specific program that I'm looking at. And here we can see all of the different products. Once again, where appropriate, it's broken down by the lot code. So I can see the individual lots, as well as the total quantity for a given item. And when not, it's just showing a single line to show me that there is no lot to find. If I want to, I can click on any one of these individual lots and see this, the bin card or the stock card, which shows me the operations that have happened to this specific stock over time. So I can see that way back in 2016, when this data was created, we added 28, and then just now, we did a physical inventory and confirmed that that 28 was still on hand. And it shows here that this is the person who did that requisition. So if I go to create a new requisition, you can see my facility is already selected, the program that I work with is already selected. So I'll do a search to look for the next period that I can work with. You can see here, February 2017, And what it's doing in the background here is it's building the expected requisition. So when we look here, we can see each one of the products 
that have been defined as full supply products. These are products that a facility should always have on hand. And then we can see the beginning balance, and then we can see here is the stock on hand. So this is what I just filled out. So we can see that this value here is the total amount for BCG, or BCG 20 in this case. So it's not showing you the individual lot codes. It's actually showing you the, the total amount. Also, we've defined for these specific products an ideal stock amount. This is a configuration that we've set up. This is one of two different ways that we can use to calculate order quantities. So in the ideal stock amount, we can see that what it does is just very basic math where it looks at the ideal stock amount. In this case, it's 3,300, and then subtracts the amount that are, that's actually on hand, 166, to come out with the expected order quantity, so 3,134 in this case. The other method is to use average consumption. Um, so it depends on the, 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 the facility and the, and the type of usage that, that kind of determines whether or not you would want to use one system or the other. So for the purposes of this demo, I'm just going to skip all of these except for a couple here. So I'll just say I'm not actually going to order 3,000 because that's a lot. So let's just do 250. As part of my normal working process, I would be entering in a comment to say, why am I entering in this specific amount? I'll say I'll take 100 of these as well. And so normally what, you, what users would be doing is they'd be going through every single one of these full supply items and making sure that the requested quantity is, is what it should be based on the, what they expect their usage to be. Now, as I mentioned before, OpenLMIS is configurable in terms of the process that you would use. So here, this button down here says that you can submit and authorize. And that's because on this demo site, we have set up requisitions to be automatically submitted and authorized at the same time. However, if you were in a facility where there was a separate person who was submitting the request as a requisition and they're from the person who would be authorizing it, doing the initial authorization, then that could be two separate steps. And this button instead would just say submit. And when I click on this, it's going to say, you want to submit this requisition. And after a moment, the save will happen. So now I can see that if I go up here, I can see the next period is available. Well, this is only available because this is in the past. But if I go to look at my requisitions and I select my facility, my cow 2, I'll see here that here is the requisition that I just created. And so once again, the the connection between the requisition and the stock management was here in having this information about the stock on hand already pre-populated, so I didn't have to enter it again. That is just a brief overview of some of the features that are included with OpenLMIS, in particular the stock management and requisition features, and how those two features work together. Uh, if you're interested in a more thorough demo where we go into how the approval process works and how that flows into both an order and the proof of delivery, uh, let us know and we can set up a, a more thorough demo for you in the future.